Welcome to online worship for Faith Lutheran Church in Staples and Bethany Lutheran in Cushing. So glad that you can join me for worship today. Today we are worshiping um, July 30th and it's 2023, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. And so it is good be, to be together. I want to give thanks for your continued support, our, your financial support. Uh, checks can be mailed to the churches and thank you for being here today. With that, let's begin our time of worship. We welcome each other to worship in the name of God, our Creator, our Redeemer, who walks with us and promises to be with us every step of our lives. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Through our lives in the water and the word. 
as you nourish our souls with your body and blood, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Here we Now hear the promise of forgiveness. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom, that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 1 Kings, the third chapter. At Gibbon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept him from this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous that they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Guided by promise and 
child of the water, child of the wind, guided by promise and stories you've heard, God of the wounded, calls you by name, and carries you home every day. We journey together as children of God, sealed by the cross. You're a child of the reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who is raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree. So the birds of the air come and make nest in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had 
and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? He, they answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Today we hear two wonderful parts of Scripture. Romans 8 is a central text talking about how nothing can separate us from the love of God. Matthew 13 gives us parables that show images of what the kingdom of God is like. Before I share some thoughts on these life-giving texts, I want to reflect on where we are in our life together. It's the end of July, the heart of summer vacation season. And yet we're already looking ahead, wondering what the fall will bring. Our country and our world continue to face so many divisions. Wars continue in places like Ukraine. People close to us and around the world are hungry. The weather seems more and more severe with heat and drought, fires, flooding, and hurricanes. And so sometimes we ask, what will tomorrow look like? We live in uncertain times. One idea I've heard repeated that I really appreciate is that we should seek to be kind. Now, there will always be times when we have people that we disagree with. And there will even be times when we cannot just agree to disagree, that we are opposed to others. But how we talk to others in the midst of our disagreements does matter. And so this week, I'm going to make a special effort to be kind. Not just to the people that I agree with, those people that are easy to talk to, those people that we understand we're working for the same thing. Instead, I will seek to be kind to people who I don't necessarily get along with or agree with. I'll seek to be kind to everybody. I think this idea matches up well with Romans 8. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words to express. There are days, many days, when I'm not exactly sure what I should be praying for. Well, that's not exactly true. I often know the first things that I want to pray for. I start with my family, with close people in my life, with members of our congregation, with those in our community. But what should our prayer time look like? I think the best answer is simply to spend time praying, to start praying. People in need will come to our minds. The needs of our country, our state, our world will follow. But the thing that we start with is carving out time each day to pray. The contents will get filled up one way or another. 
Now, the hard part of Romans 8 is when we hear this. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purposes. Some people hear this passage and they think that God can take everything and make it good. And so no matter what horrible thing happens, God will make it okay. Well, let me remind you of what we know. Life isn't that simple. We do know that bad, horrible things happen. Awful, heartbreaking things. There are true hurts, real pain in our world. And let's be honest, those things don't always lead people to our God. Some good people are broken by the pain and hurt that they have received. And I don't know why this world has pain, disappointment, heartache, and failure in it. Sometimes we know that we have done things wrong and we live with the results of that. Other times, bad things just happen no matter what our part has been in it. And so my response has always been to start with, I trust that God has made this world for a reason. And that Jesus God made flesh, is with me, with us, through the good and the bad. And that we're never alone. And knowing that often, but not always, God can turn what we think of as a bad experience and use it for good. And in those times of pure evil, pure pain, Hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. God never, ever leaves us. And so I look back to Genesis and the story of Joseph as a great example. Joseph is bragging about his gift to make sense of dreams, and his brothers have had enough. And so they fake his death and sell him into slavery. Nothing good there. But later, his brothers come to him in their time of need and are dependent on his mercy as they seek food in Egypt. And Joseph tells them, you intended what you did to me for evil. But God, God used it for good. So the moral of the story, of course, is not to sell your snotty brother into slavery. It's that God often uses those hard times of our lives for good. In Matthew 13, we continue to think on what does the kingdom of heaven look like? And so Jesus tells us parables to stretch our mind. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. It starts small and grows large. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, a little can have a huge effect. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure in a field. Our God's kingdom is a hidden treasure beyond measure. The kingdom of heaven is like fine pearls, a beautiful thing worthy of trading all we have to possess. The kingdom of heaven is like a net that catches fish of all kinds. A reminder that God's kingdom is for all people. 
all across the world. And so in these parables, Jesus is telling us some important things. That the kingdom of heaven is so valuable, we should be willing to give up what we have to get it. And the kingdom is not about being big or powerful. Instead, it starts small. It can start weakly. Jesus is telling us what it means for us to be the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Our influence starts small like a mustard seed or yeast, but with time it grows large and changes the world around it. The word of Jesus is so precious that we should be willing to give up what we have to hold on to it. The first lesson today tells the story of God asking King Solomon, what should I give to you? And Solomon asks not for power or riches or a long life. Instead, Solomon asks for wisdom. And this wisdom would help Solomon rule and rule well. And so the gift to him would also be a gift to all of Israel. So today, as we think about the Spirit giving us words and sighs that we need to pray, we consider what it means for ourselves to be part of the kingdom of God. And we think about what we ask for God to give to us. I think we would be wise to follow Solomon's example and ask for wisdom as well. Wisdom on how to work together with those who are different than we are. Wisdom on how to be safe and still continue to care for others. Feed the hungry. Care for those who do not have homes. Care for those most vulnerable, the aged, the young, the infirm. And so today we are reminded again and again in our scripture that God is still active in this world. Sometimes in small ways that lead to huge results. And so we give thanks that God is working today through God's people. And today we pray for God's wisdom to be with us, to guide us now and forever. Amen. Christ in the eyes of all who see me, 
Christ in the ears that hear my voice, Christ in the hearts of all who know me, oh Christ around me, oh Christ around me. We continue with prayers to our Lord. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Almighty God, we pray for the church and all the servants of the gospel. Equip all those who proclaim your good news. Help us to always seek to share the good news that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, be with those who seek to learn the faith, Sunday school students, confirmants, those new to the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the well-being of creation. Safeguard the environment, clean rivers and lakes, preserve trees and Give us tiny mustard seeds and send those who will be with us and keep things good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for the nations. Install, instill in all who govern the ability to discern between good and evil. Free those who are oppressed and protect all those facing danger. Promote peace across the world. And promote peace in our towns, our neighborhoods, and cities. And so, Lord, we pray for those places that are in the midst of conflict. Places like Ukraine and Haiti and Yemen and so many other places. We pray for your peace and justice to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all in any need. Protect those fleeing from war. Shelter any who are in poverty. Clothe the naked. Soothe those who grieve. And heal the sick. Lord, we know of so many who need your healing. We lift their names now to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for these congregations those gathered here today, and those absent from our assembly. Grant safety to travelers, refreshment and safety for children attending summer camps and community programs and summer schools. Give direction to all undergoing life transitions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of water and word, we ask that you bless those newly baptized. Be with parents as they seek to faithfully raise their children. And help us as members of Faith and Bethany live out our obligation as a church to care for young people in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your saints who now let rest from their labors. Inspire us by their witness to treasure the gospel and continually nourish us with your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. We give thanks in this time of offering for all that God has given to us. And now we seek to respond by giving some back to our church and to our community. Everybody. 
always got something to offer in the name of the Lord. To the lost and lonely ones, a message it is clear. We have all got a gift to give, our hands, our hearts, our tears. Everybody's got something to offer, young and old, the prince and the pauper. Everybody's got something to offer in the name of the Lord. To the believers gathered here, the message it is true. We have all got a gift to give in all we say and do. Everybody's got something to offer, young and old, the prince and the pauper. Everybody's got something to offer in the name of the Lord. Now we thank you for your good gifts. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now hear God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Who 
Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for worship today.